Good afternoon. It is a soggy kind of day today. We haven't been out much because it is wet, wet, wet. I don't know if you can see puddles of water everywhere. We've moved the Chucky Looks over into this other paddock beside the house. I'm Chrissy. If you haven't been here before, if you're new here, welcome. This is our little farm in East Texas where there are nine of us little Aussies starting out. Really? Wow. We only put them in here yesterday and they have chopped it up. But it, it is really wet. And I think it might be going to rain again. I thought I could duck out here in between showers, but maybe not. So I'm feeling quite philosophical and contemplative today. It is 25, the 25th of March, which is 12 months exactly since we landed in America. Oh, and I've got to show you this. This is the last rose I pruned and look, Beautiful little pink one coming out. Hmm. Oh yeah, it's starting to rain. The rain has stopped again, so I'm back out. I wanna show you some of these beautiful new blooms. Okay, so look, these are the roses that we pruned. And Look, look at this little one hiding in here. Delicate, beautiful yellow. What have you two been up to? We were building this while you were doing the garden. Wow. So that's one good thing about... Is it wobbly? <laughs> Mary, ready? It's going to feel like quicksand. <laughs> Ooey gooey, squishy Plus. mud. Ooey gooey, Plus. water warmer, mighty warmer thing. He stepped it's upon right. the train. The train he did not see. Ugh. That's pretty hard. <laughs> you two are getting in a big mess. That's the fun of rain, isn't it? Muddy yeah. puddles. It's very deep. Oh. They're having lots of fun there. I'm looking for some Ready, roses. No, nope, this it. one. Lots of green growth, but no roses yet. Ready. What am I ready for? <laughs> oh dear. Oh, this one has some beautiful new buds, this oak tree. Oh, look at them, little baby buds. Oh, that's cool. I think there's more over here. This oak. Now this was curious to me because I don't think it ever really lost all its leaves. It's a Empire Live Oak. Oh, I wonder if that's why it's... Let me read it. Here. Oh, it is. It's evergreen. I was just thinking this Papo and Hubby having a cup of tea. I th it, it's an evergreen oak. I didn't know there was such a thing. It's an oak tree that doesn't lose its leaves. I was wondering why it didn't lose its leaves like everyone else. And this beautiful maple. Look, so sweet. It's all come back lush and lovely. Let me see what this one is because I feel like, I wonder if this is the same. Yes, an Empire Live Oak. So it, yes, so it's evergreen as well. So we've got two evergreen oaks. That is pretty cool. I did not know that. I didn't even know you could get evergreen oaks. Okay. Then over here, there's some more 
I saw these from you. I haven't been over to look at them yet. Look, over here near the mulch piles. Here's a beautiful, look, with raindrops all over it. And there's more coming out and there's another one there. And it is literally covered in buds. So pretty soon it's gonna be a blaze of color. And this one here is a pretty pink. So like, I we pruned these guys back really hard. Like we pruned them back to hardly anything. And they have shot back up and they're just covered, covered in little buds, ready to burst into color. That is very exciting. I'm excited for this one. It is a bigger, older rose bush, and it's not the same as those other ones. And it was a glorious color. Oh, this is budding too, good. This oak, which is of obviously the deciduous kind. They look beautiful, dainty little baby leaves coming back. So cute. So this one has lots of buds but none out yet. And it was really pretty, so I can't wait to see. It looks like it's gonna have a lot of flowers as well. Okay, I have some potting up that has to be done. I'm having to take some action with these little tomato guys because they're getting really big and leggy. Um, so there's these um, sweeties, I think these are Romas. Oh dear, sorry. So sweeties, Romas. And then I have some, I have another, uh, maybe two or three more trays of other varieties. And my dilemma is that they're getting too big and it's just not quite time. So the average last frost date for this area is the 22nd of March, which has already been and gone. But, um, most of the people we talk to and have spoken to experienced gardeners around here say that they wait until after Easter because a lot of times there'll just be that one last frost and I'm kind of, uh, do I just put, I'm toying with putting some in and just taking a bit of a risk and then saving most of them until after Easter. Um, but I'm like, yeah, I'm just, I'm a little bit, a little bit torn about what to do. Um, but let's, I'll show you the guys the potatoes because they're really coming along. But those guys, those tomatoes are getting too big. Um, so if I'm not going to put them in the ground, I'm going to need to pot them up. So that is what I have on my mind. I can't, I don't even have enough pots to do all of them, but look, they're coming along nicely. Thing big and big and green and beautiful looking. Now I have I have had to rescue them several times from an errant chook who has been very naughty and keeps coming in here and in fact has taken to I don't know if you'll be able to show you. Let me see. Can you see has made a little nest there? She keeps climbing up here on top of the straw and she cluck clucks over here, plops down there on top of my potatoes and lays an egg. She thinks that's her spot. But she's also been coming in here and scratching this up and I keep having to rake it, <clears throat> rake it back up. Anyway, we've moved them a little bit further away. So she hasn't been in there today. I'm hoping she behaves herself <laughs> and stays where she's supposed to. So yeah. I I think I might put a few tomatoes along here um, and a few along this other fence. The fence will be a handy sort of thing to train them up for now anyway. So still have to come out here and finish prepping these beds. Still have to finish all of the raised beds. So I feel like there's a lot still to do. But um, I don't want to risk losing some of these tomatoes just from them being 
left too long in the small pots. Okay, well, I have moved outside because the lighting is shocking in the med room and it's also a bit dreary and it's much nicer out here. So here I am with my leggy tomatoes ready to see if I can help them. Now I found this old tray that I actually rescued out of a dumpster last year, end of last year at a plant place and this stuff was all just tossed in there and half the plants were dead but I rescued some of them and saved some of them and anyway now I'm going to use it to put my bigger tomatoes in so that's my thoughts that's my plan I don't actually have a lot of potting mix I've realized so this may be a short-lived project we will see as I said I'm feeling a little philosophical today it's been a year since we've um, arrived here in America, living here in Texas from my homeland of Australia. And it, it has been an amazing year. It has, like in all honesty, been a really hard year in a lot of ways, but also a really beautiful year like an amazing year and as I think back over everything that has happened um, you know I'm just amazed it is just amazing what God has done so this is honeycomb hybrid I'm pretty sure it's a cherry tomato from from memory on the packet I'm pretty sure so there's two in here. I'm going to, you know, I don't know whether to separate them or keep them in, keep them as two just growing a little bit bigger and then separate them li later. Decisions, decisions. Now, if I was planting them straight out, I wouldn't even bother because pulling them out of this little pot because I know that the pot can go straight in the ground and break down but I just think by the time I'm ready to plant I don't want these guys to be stunted I'm just gonna pry them apart poke him in there yeah maybe I will only maybe I will separate them I don't know. I can tell I'm not going to have enough pots and I'm not going to have enough potting mix. <laughs> so, anyway, I'll do a few and we shall see. So what has been, uh, some of it has been things I kind of expected. There has been lots of unexpected things. Um, so been... I sat the other day on Sunday. I just took the day. Didn't really do a whole heap. I wasn't feeling great. Um, so I kind of just stayed home and just got my journal out and was processing. I process things best often when I write. Um, talking helps. Too. but I do think in words I think by right when I write it just helps me process and think things through so I got my journal out and just sat with my cuppa out on the front and it is so beautiful here especially right now it is so beautiful everything is just lush and green and the new shoots on everything or the lush greenery on all of the oaks. They're such a bright, vivid green. It's so pretty, um, very beautiful. And I was thinking about some of the hardships, um, some of the sadness that comes, I guess, when you leave everything you know and everyone you know, but also some of the unexpected joys and some of the miracles really that have happened 
And it was just this realization again of the fact that it is so real in life at times. The longer I live, the more I can see how often you can be both grieving and yet full of hope and joy at the same time, simultaneously. So it's a weird, it's a weird thing. Look at this, this is really cool. It's just pulling this out and I noticed, I don't know if you can see that teeny weeny little, little uh, roots are starting to go through from the soil inside. So just shows how these, you know, these little fiber pots do work and the roots come through. So I thought that was pretty cool. But anyway, so I guess I could just put him in there and put more around it. But what I might do is just peel this open so that the roots have a freer access to this new soil, which I'm going to put in here. This new potting mix. And we'll pot him up that way. I've just noticed when I was looking through my videos the other day, this cardi, this little cardigan, I have been wearing so much. It's in so many videos that I'm wearing this cardigan. I don't know about you guys, but when I find something that is super comfy, I just end up wearing it to death. And I got this, I found this at a, like a consignment store, like a secondhand store and so I didn't pay a lot for it or anything, but it is so, ah, I'm making a mess. So comfy and I have just lived in it all winter, except it wasn't great when I had to go outside and it was really, really freezing because it's kind of a light weave and the wind goes through it, but it is so cozy. And so I've worn it like when it matches and even when it doesn't, because I really like it. <laughs> all right. Okay, it's a little bit trickier with, it's a little bit trickier with the pot in there to get the soil around the outside. I don't really know if I like doing that. I might not do that again. It's just a bit more awkward somehow. Yeah, I'm not going to do that again. Well, it is 5.30. I don't know how that happened, but all I have done is this one little tray. Um, but anyway, I guess that's a start and I'm just gonna have to do my best to come back out here. I've got these guys to go and I've got two more trays inside. The sun is starting to sink, but it's still a ways off, but I've got to think about dinner. So I'm going to have to head indoors.